received from the Lord, but I hand it on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, by wrote it and said, This is my body that is to you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice, after supper, saying, This chalice is the new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim the death of the Lord until the promises. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Nice to see you all this morning. Today we're celebrating the memory of St. Peter, Chanel, priest and martyr. And the Mass has been offered for Tom Ketchum. So as we come to pray for Tom, let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my unspeakable fault. Therefore, I ask us to be very all the saints and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for Tom Ketchum. O oh God, who for the spreading of your church crowned St. Peter Chanel with martyrdom, Grant that in these days of Paschal joy, we may so celebrate the mysteries of Christ's death and resurrection as to bear worthily witness to newness of life to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from Acts 12, 24 to 13. The word of God continued to spread and grow. After Barnabas and Saul completed their relief mission, they returned to Jerusalem, taking with them John, who was called Mark. Now there were in the church at Antioch prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manaean, who was a close friend of Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, completing their fasting and prayer, they laid hands on them and sent them off. So they, sent forth by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia, and from there sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived in Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is number 67. O God, let all the nations praise you. O God, let all the nations praise you. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth, among all nations, your salvation. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. May the nations be glad and exalt, because you rule the peoples in equity. The nations of the earth you guide. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. May the peoples praise you, O oh God. May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us. And may all the ends of the earth fear him. O oh God, let all the nations praise you. Yeah. 
Jesus cried out and said, whoever believes in me, believes not only in me, but also in the one who sent me. And whoever sees me, sees the one who sent me. I came into the world as light, so that everyone who believes in me might not remain in darkness. And if anyone hears my words and does not observe them, I do not condemn him, for I did not come to condemn the world, but to save the world. Whoever rejects me and does not accept my words has something to judge him. The word that I spoke, it will condemn him on the last day, because I did not speak on my own, but the Father who sent me commanded me what to say and speak. And I know that his commandment is eternal life. So what I say, I say as the Father told me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the first reading, we see the first missionary journey of Paul and Barnabas. And it's amazing how quick the Christianity spread in the early church and how full of enthusiasm they were. And I mentioned this past Sunday about what we need in our parish today is good shepherds. And talking to people since then, I'm amazed at the amount of people that are really trying to bring back the inactive Catholic. So I say, keep it up, it's wonderful. Because, uh, yeah, we're all to go after the lost. We're all called to be missionary. We're all called to bring Christ to others. So do everything you can to bring Christ to others. And the Gospel of John I love. And it's good for us to keep in mind that John was an old man when he was writing this gospel and he was trying to convince everyone that Jesus was the Christ and by this belief we may have life in his name. Jesus was God's equal. He uses all those I am statements, the seven I am statements, and to see Jesus was to see the Father. He came to speak on behalf of the Father. The Father and he was one and he did everything in union with the Father and he came that we may have life and have eternal life especially. So it's important to remember that Jesus is the light of the world and we are called to share in that light and that life and be with God for all eternity in heaven. May we always come to the light and follow Jesus Christ, the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray for Tom Ketchum, for whom the Mass has been offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This weekend, many of our children will make First Communion, and this week from today, many of our young people will be confirmed. So we remember all those receiving confirmation at this time. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And the quads are doing well, but there's always challenges, so we always need to pray for the success of our quads. And the people who join will persevere in their process. We pray to the Lord. Lord and uh, with the building of the new church, I'm amazed at the way they can run around up on that slope of the roof. I just pray for their safety and for the successful completion of the building project. We pray to the Lord. Lord for all of us, that we reach out to the inactive Catholics and invite them back. We pray to the Lord. Lord we thank God for this day and all its opportunities. May we live in God's love this day and be missionary through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. And the Lord is that sacrifice of your hands. O oh God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in the sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, 
that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by ordinary way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to claim you, Lord. But at this time, above all, to Lord ye yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed by the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifice of all to fulfillment in the reality of the cross, and by commending himself to you for our salvation showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore overcome with pastoral joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of and the earth full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in and today I have a quote from St. Jerome. St. Jerome, the great scripture scholar, was born in the year 347. He said, After the tithe had been fulfilled by the Passover celebration, and he had eaten the flesh of the Lamb with his apostles, he takes bread, which strengthens the heart of man, and goes on to the true sacrament of the Passover, so that just as Melchizedek, the priest of the Most High God, in prefiguring him, made bread and wine an offering, he too makes himself manifest in the reality of his own body and blood. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when as once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord, my Lord. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord, my God. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come from the end. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the past and sacrifice of Christ, that has been handed on to us, and granted by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and into the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, with all the bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways and with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph our spouse, with the Apostles and Martyrs, with St. Peter Chanel, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the name and the power and the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on my grave, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for each other. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now for her. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, my reflection is uh, very similar to Father Patty's, however, not very brief. Uh, but I'd like to focus on discipleship. There were two verses, one in the uh, first reading and one in the second reading that stayed with me throughout the, the week. One from verse 24 in Acts, but the word of God continued to spread and flourish. Now Acts was written around 70 AD by Luke and it was during that heavy persecution. Uh, but there's not a lot of difference in persecution of Christians in today's world. So that, that has struck with me. But it struck with me around discipleship and being a good shepherd. Uh, but the other one that really struck me was John uh, 12, verse 46. I came into the world as light so that everyone who believes in me might not remain in darkness. It really connected for me around discipleship that that is what we are challenged to do is to help bring that light to people that have fallen in the darkness. I think back many times where it was brought back to me by people that cared and loved and just knew. Uh, and as Father said, I love John's gospel because it, his approach is really simple. He focused on why believing in Jesus is an absolute necessity if you want to find eternal life. So combining those two, I looked at what is that verse of Acts 12? What does that mean today? I think it's very applicable 
there's still a lot of darkness in the, in the world. So what about this discipleship? Exactly what is Father Patty challenging us to? I kept thinking of myself going door to door in a black outfit with a Bible. And I think there's more to it than that. So what does it mean to me? So as I read uh, a lot of information around discipleship, it's not just a head knowledge of passion on information. It's a heart transformation. And really, you can't do that door to door knocking and saying, hey, I need five minutes. You got to do that through interaction. Now, the good news to me is that people are watching today, watching Daily Mass and come to Daily Mass. You are the epitome of discipleship in our community. I've seen so much, many examples in the last several months about your caring and giving as a family. And two recent examples are the quad process and the spring raffle of over forty thousand dollars. It's a it's amazing to give in other people. I think in 40, 50 years when my granddaughters, if I could build them in enough houses, they move down here and they come to this beautiful church, they'll be thanking all of you that are watching and sitting in here for which y'all put the foundation, that cornerstone of our new church. But I've been wondering how we can all be better given bright lights and show the message. So I looked up, do you know how many interactions a person has in a day, in a 24 hour period? How many social interactions? One, 10, 100, in 2020, over 1,500 interactions a day by people. So we have a few chances. And guess what? According to Gallup, the Gallup survey folks, every person-to-person -person interaction you have with someone, you leave them a little more positive or a little less. It's not going to be the same. That, that interaction is going to create, it's like an atom, atom. It's going to create a reaction. So how many of those 1,500 I was starting to think, do I leave someone negative? If one, too many? So that's really hit me. How do you do it in a daily? So a quick example over the weekend, we had uh, all my brothers came into town uh, for a weekend and we cooked a lot and just social uh, and we invited a friend that's real close to us and his daughter, son and their friend, young couple, younger. One night after cooking, I came back, I sat down and my, my, uh, one of my sister-in-laws was talking to three of them, just talking. I didn't know, they were so attentive and I sat down and she looked at me and she says, tell her what Tell them what your mama said to y'all boys. And it, it really struck me, I wasn't sure. But they couldn't believe how close we were as five brothers just interacting and what we stood for. And we were lining up to go to Sunday Mass, even though, wait a minute, we got a lot going on here. And she said, tell them, she said, you're gonna, uh, it's the last thing I do, you're gonna love each other. Apparently we fought a lot as kids, <laughs> but, uh, and I did find out I was the instigator of being the oldest, <laughs> which kind of hurt. But, and she said, we'd make sure we all go to church. What a discipleship she was to these three young uh, adults that are not Catholic to understand what it meant to us that one interaction. So I, I pray that God helps to use me as a more of an instrument to be like my sister-in-law. Uh, that moment where she had an opportunity with three uh, young people in this world. And I ask God that help me learn how to be a disciple in a heart transmission, not just information transmission. Thank you.
Very good, Kurt. Thank you very much. A young boy was invited to church by one of his friends. On the way out the door, his mother handed him two dollars. One for you and one for God, the mother said. As the boy walked along with his friends, the wind blew the dollars right out of his hand and onto the street. One of them went right down into the sewer. Oh, said the boy, there goes the God's dollar. <laughs> The Lord be with you. <laughs> and the Almighty God bless you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Let us pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Holy Spirit.